Okay, so let's, if we have this journal entry here, we'll be opening up cash T account, common stock T account, posting the debit side to the left side, credit side to the right side. Okay, if we have an additional entry, so what does this entry mean? The second one here. This entry. <coughs> Mm -hmm. That's good. So this is how we post it. But what does it mean for this entry? What is represented here? What does this activity represent? Meaning, are we gaining the cash or are we giving away the cash? We're giving away the cash in exchange for a piece of land that's worth $20,000. And both of these accounts are under asset category. There are two different accounts of assets. One account is being increased by the piece of land, the value of the land, $20,000. Cash account will be reducing the because we're using up to purchase that piece of land. Changing a type of asset for another type of asset. Okay, so you see cash account capturing the transactions we had earlier, common stock. We increased cash, $30,000, and now we're reducing cash by $20,000. Okay, so when you look at the T account over there under cash, if I don't tell you what's, what has been going on in the journal entries, when you look at that, you should be able to identify that the left side represents earlier we received, the corporation received $30,000. The right side represents later on the corporation paid out $20,000 in exchange for something. Okay, so when you look at each and every T account, you should be able to identify land, we purchased land that worth $20,000, common stock, we issue common stock, and we raise capital from the public by $30,000. So without giving you these journal entries, when you look at these you should know what it represents. Whether it has been increased, the account has been increased or decreased. Okay, so if we draw a line there for cash, remember the idea of normal balance. Cash is an asset account. Normal balance is, will be on the left side, where the, the side where the account is being increased. So if these are the only two entries that happen in this month and we want to summarize that account, we'll be drawing a line there and capturing the left side of the amount minus the right side. So the net, the balance here for cash is $10,000 and we'll be posting this, representing this $10,000 under the normal balance side, which is the left side for cash account. Okay, so for common stock account, it'll be the right side because that's the side where the normal balance is. For liability account, also the right side. Okay, another example here. You see office supplies, you see accounts payable. What does this mean? We owe money, $500, specifically <coughs> because we purchased office supplies, but we have not yet paid cash. So we have accounts payable liability. But at the same time, we have increased assets value $500. So since both of these are new accounts, we'll be opening up two new T accounts, post the office supplies value to the left side because it's an asset account. Asset increases on the debit side. Accounts payable, the right side. For liability, the increasing side is the credit side. Okay, so this journal entry represents corporation purchasing supplies on account meaning they're not paying cash, so they have money owed to third party by $500. Okay, another one. You see cash, you see service revenue, so what, is this, what does this transaction mean? <coughs> so the corporation is gaining money or losing money? Gaining money because they provided a certain type of service to customer that worth $55,000. Okay, so you have again cash account affected, increasing cash, post this dollar amount to the left side, debit side. Revenue, the balance, normal, normal balance is the right side, the balance where the account increases. The side where the account increases, so revenue will be posted under the right side, credit side.
Okay, so this is an example of after multiple transaction happens, what a ledger would look like. We just went over about four transactions, post them, journalize them in uh, the journal, and post them to T accounts. But after multiple transactions, it should look something like this. So you see the left side is a bunch of asset accounts. How many assets account, asset accounts can you see here? Assets. Cash, accounts receivables, office supplies, land. Okay, so we have four assets account, left side of the equation. What about liability? Only one, accounts payable. Equity, we have a lot of them. Right? As long as you have a certain type of expense, you will open up so you will open up separate accounts for different types of expenses. So you would see utility expense, salary expense, rent expense, and different types of rent expense. Service revenue, the only revenue account you see here. Ex externally generated capital, common stock, $30,000. There's also dividends. Okay, so you can see that dividends balance is on the left side. Remember, dividends and expenses are exceptions in stockholders equity. Reduces stockholders equity account. So whenever these transaction happens, it's always captured on the left side. Revenue, common stock, you see under the right side, credit side. So that revenue account there represents that April 8th, we provided services to customer, collected $5,500. Well, we may not necessarily be collecting it by cash, it will be generated revenue that represents $55,000. It can also be accounts receivable. April 10th, we have revenue generated $3,000. Altogether, the balance is on the right side, the normal balance side, $8,500. Now, if we take a look at that liability account, what does that represent? Meaning that $300, what does that mean? We still owe $300 after April. Okay, and specifically, if you dig into the transactions, you see the right side, April 3rd, $500. April 30th, $100. So that means, since the right side is increased, that means earlier we had liability, either borrow money from others or purchase something that we have not yet paid. All together, $500 and $100. Then the left side, April 21st, we paid off a portion, $300. But at the end, we still have $300 owe to other parties. Yes. Okay. Right, so liabilities, the right side represents the money that you owe to others before. Left side represents the part that you paid off. So overall, you still have $300 that corporation owes to other party. Now, cash account here, you see multiple transactions. There are eight of them that has affected cash account. So the left side represents what? Debit side, and specifically debit for assets, represents the money that corporation actually received. Right. So left side, they received the April 1st, $30,000, then 5500 2000 9000 What about the right side? The money that they used. Okay, so there's also four of the transactions that affected cash account. Specifically, they used up a part of the cash. But overall, the balance, remember the net normal balance side for cash is the left side. You see the balance, $2,100, and that represents the net effect of all these transactions. So at the end, the company still owns $2,100, uh, $21,000 of cash. This is the total balance. $300? So the right side is the money that you borrowed or owe. Right, either by purchasing something, not paying the money, or you borrow. Five. Let's say you borrow 500, you owe 100 based on purchasing supplies. Altogether, you owe 600. But in the middle of the month, 21st, you paid off 300. So the left side captures the money that you no longer owe to other parties. You actually already cleared it. You cleared only a portion, not the whole. So you clear 300, and at the end, you still have you still owe 300 dollars. 600 minus 300. Okay. So if you see a balance under liabilities, that always represents the money that you still owe to other parties. If the company do not owe any money, you will see balance as zero. 
Okay, but as long as the credit side all exceeds the debit side, then that means you have not yet paid off the money, the total amount of money that the corporation owed. Okay, so we still owe three hundred dollars cash. We have twenty-one thousand dollars accounts receivable. What does that mean? That a thousand dollars represents. The balance, which means that this is still the money that corporation will be receiving from customer later. Okay, so accounts receivable here, you see April 10th, $3,000, meaning this was the money originally customer promised to uh, pay you later. Then April 22nd, you actually do have a few customers that paid you back the money. Okay, so that would be $2,000, but still not the whole thing. So you still have remaining $1,000 that you will be collecting later. Okay, so three thousand dollars was a promise of client, was a promise from customer to pay the money based on either the goods or the services that you provided. It may not be just from one customer; it could be from multiple ones. <coughs> so the right side here, April twenty second, a few weeks later, then you see customer, part of the customer is paying back the money. And then you still have a balance of thousand dollars representing the customer that have not yet paid you the money based on the service and goods that you provided to them. So the balance represents future cash receipt. Any questions so far? <coughs> now supplies simply represents the value of the supplies that is still in the corporation. Land, you see land, the debit side is $20,000, representing increase, meaning you have a piece of land that you purchased that worth $20,000. What about the right side? Possibly that a company sold out other pieces of their assets, other pieces of land that only worth $9,000. So these could be separate different types of assets, but it's all part of land account. So you had a piece of land that you purchased that worth $20,000. You sold out a part that worth $9,000. Overall, the property in total worth $11,000 after this month. Okay, so two transactions that related to properties value. Okay, so here are a bunch of T accounts. If after a month you have summarized all the transactions, then the balance amount you see here are basically ready for trial balance. So what trial balance is, we're just picking the balance and represented under an internal document called trial balance. So under trial balance, you would not see the detailed changes, detailed transaction amount. You will just see the balance for each and every account. That's all. Okay, so the purpose of capturing these in ledgers, at the end, we want to summarize each and every account's changes after adding, subtracting multiple transactions. Then you just use the balance amount and copy that balance to trial balance.